So welcome to the Vancouver Police Department's 2019 Commendation Ceremony. My name is Simi Hare. I'm the Director of Public Affairs with the VPD and I have the honour of being your host today. To begin, we'd like to welcome the Lieutenant Governor of BC and members of the official party. They will be led in by Sergeant Major Ray Gardner and Piper Mike McNeil. So I'll ask you to please rise and direct your attention to the back of the room. Thank you. Please be seated. So thank you everyone for being here this morning. Today we celebrate heroic efforts of ordinary citizens and the excellence and achievements of the sworn and civilian members of the VPD. I'm relatively new to the VPD, but this is my third commendation ceremony. And I have to say it's my absolute favorite VPD event. And I'm not just saying that because the catering is fantastic, but it's a great event because we get to stop and reflect and take time to appreciate some amazing and inspiring people and hear some fantastic stories that we finally get to share with each other and members of the public. But before we get to those stories, I would like to recognize some guests who are here today. I'll be making several introductions, so please hold your applause until the end. We are very pleased to welcome Her Honor, Janet Austin, Lieutenant Governor of BC. From the Vancouver Police Board, we are joined by Mayor Kennedy Stewart, Chair of the Board, Dr. Sherry McGee, Vice Chair, Mr. Barge DeHan, Mr. Thomas Tan, and Dr. Peter Wong. From the Vancouver Police Foundation, we, we, we will be joined by trustees Mr. Jeff Duncan and Ms. Gwen Hardy, and we're joined by Executive Director Andrea Wright and her team. From the VPD Executive, we are joined by Chief Constable Adam Palmer, Deputy Chief Constable Steve Rye, Acting Deputy Chief Constable Mike Porteous, Superintendent Mar Martin Bruce, Superintendent Steve Ely, and Superintendent Marcy Flamond, as well as Senior Director Nancy Ng and Senior Director Jason Rood. I also want to recognize members of the VPD Commendation Board who are here today, Chair Superintendent Steve Ely, Inspector Ken Ng, Acting Inspector Phil Hurd, Inspector Suzanne Muir, Inspector Glenn Newman, and Senior Direct and Jace, Director Jason Root. Finally, a warm welcome to the friends and family members of the recipients of today's awards. And to kick things off, I'll ask Chief Constable Adam Palmer to come forward and say a few words. Thank you, Simi. Good morning, the Honorable Lieutenant Governor Janet Austin, Mayor Stewart, members of the Police Board, fellow members of the Vancouver Police Department, and ladies and gentlemen. It's really my honor to be here today to celebrate and recognize members of the Vancouver Police Department and members from our community for incredible acts of bravery while serving this city. Policing is a very challenging profession, and we're fortunate in the city that for the past 133 years, since 1886, such hardworking men and women have dedicated their lives to keeping Vancouver safe, risking their own personal safety to assist total strangers in time of need, but at the same time showing care and compassion to people in our community who are less fortunate. While citizens are home sleeping, our officers are out there 24 seven, responding to 911 calls and heading into dangerous situations every day in the city. In fact, today, VPD will receive over 700 calls for service from the public. And I think sometimes it's easy in a free and democratic society 
and a safe city like Vancouver to take things like that for granted. I'm proud of each and every member of the Vancouver Police Department, both sworn and civilian, and it's so great to see the family members here today because your love and support are crucial for the success of our members. Today you're going to be hearing stories about brave men and women, not only police officers from the VPD, but also incredible stories about citizens from our community who stepped up and had to make difficult and sometimes life-changing situations and decisions. Situations that were very dangerous and sometimes life-altering for people, saving people's lives. Also at today's award ceremony, we're going to be presenting the Police Officer of the Year Award, celebrating the achievements of an officer that has made a career out of truly going beyond the call and contributed to public safety significantly in our city. Sergeant Mike Hurd, who's a highly skilled homicide investigator and leader in our department. And for the third time ever, a relatively new award, the VPD Civilian Employee of the Year, recognizing the outstanding service from one of our civilian professionals, Maria Lise Dami. I'll also be pre presenting the Community Safety Leader Award for outstanding community service in Vancouver. In closing, I'd like to thank members of the Commendation Board and the Police Board in selecting this year's winners. And I want to thank our Public Affairs Section and Director Simi here for doing all the work behind the scenes and making this event so successful. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the event. Thank you, Chief. We will start today's ceremony with the presentation of police officer commissions. This is a new provincial honor to formally recognize high caliber senior members of municipal police departments for their rank, professionalism, and dedication to policing. The criteria and qualifications for the recognition are set out in the police officer commission regulation. They include an exemplary service record with 10 or more years of service in BC, a baccalaureate or master's degree or equivalent, or the rank of inspector or higher for at least four years, and a recommendation from a qualifying supervisor or police board. We are delighted to have the Lieutenant Governor of BC here to present the commissions. I would like to invite Her Honour to provide a few remarks. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mayor Stewart, Chief Palmer, um, Barge DeHan, Sherry McGee, and all the wonderful members of our Board of Directors here today, uh, to the recipients and proud families as well. I would like to start by acknowledging the Coast Salish peoples, the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil upon whose traditional territory we gather today, and to thank them for sharing these lands in peace and friendship. Um, also, my thanks to retired Inspector Bob Yasui, uh, known, I think, to many of you, who joins me today as honorary aide-de-camp, and, uh, and my new um, aide-de-camp as well. Where are they? Here they are. I'm very grateful to have them both with me. It's wonderful working with these guys, but you guys know the problem that goes along with it, right? People sometimes think they're the lieutenant governor. <laughs> You'd be amazed how often that happens. <laughs> Anyway, it is a pleasure to work with them. I'm so delighted to join you today uh, to celebrate really the exemplary contributions and service and to express my personal gratitude for your dedication, for your professionalism, and for your commitment to duty. Also for the risks that you assume, putting yourselves in harm's way, often in the most challenging of circumstances to keep us all safe from harm. I'm keenly aware that the tasks we ask of you as police officers and civilian employees, who we also honour today, are becoming ever more challenging, diverse and complex. And I'm very proud of the leadership that the VPD has long demonstrated on many contemporary issues, setting an example for jurisdictions throughout Canada and indeed around the world. I want to draw particular attention to your leadership in addressing the twin challenges of mental health uh, and addiction, which I know consume a very large share of, the, of police time and resources, and this is something that the Chief and I have had some very interesting conversations about and really delighted to be able to support your work in any way I can. We know that no community is immune from this, but here in Vancouver, you deal with a disproportionate share of the challenge due, of course, to the tainted drug supply um, that continues to flood the Vancouver market. I think you deserve tremendous credit for your leadership 
in working collaboratively with health authorities and medical professionals and community service providers uh, for your education initiatives that help to reduce stigma and, and the kind of stigma that drives people to use alone and f for the compassion that you show to some of our most vulnerable citizens on the front lines of this crisis. The City of Vancouver, the VPD, and our health authorities have long shown important leadership in embracing current research and evidence and being open to examples of best practice from other jurisdictions around the world. But I do believe that we need to have a broad-based, society-wide, what I would call a courageous conversation about how we approach the twin challenges of mental health and addiction, without which I think it will be difficult to make real progress. I'm hopeful that as a society, we are seeing greater willingness to look honestly and deeply at these challenges. I also want to commend you for all that you do to build positive relationships with diverse communities, First Nations, the LGBTQ community, new immigrants, and many, many more. For all that you do to support the victims of violent crime and domestic abuse, and to serve as role models and mentors for youth. I will always be grateful for the many sacrifices you and your families make for the privilege of serving us. It's important that we also express appreciation to your families and friends, those who support you in your work. And so finally, knowing as I do that there is no such thing as a bad short speech, I will conclude with two thoughts. First, it is sometimes said that the greatest gift possible is the gift of yourself. And I thank you all for giving that gift so very generously to all of us. And second, I share a quote from Franklin Roosevelt that has always been meaningful to me, and it is, far and away, the best that life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. I can see that you found that chance in your work with the Vancouver Police Department. So on behalf of Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, and on behalf of all British Columbians, I thank you for your absolutely splendid service. It's an honor to be in your company today. Thank you, Aichka. Thank you, Your Honor. So congratulations to Inspector Lynn Noftal, Inspector Trevor Marmachek, and Inspector Bill Spurn for your police officer commissions. Please come up to accept your commissions. So when you came in today, you will have noticed a booklet on your chair. This is our Beyond the Call booklet. It lists all of today's award and commendation recipients and outlines why they are being recognized. The presentations today will be made in the same order as they are listed in the book. So feel free to follow along as the ceremony progresses. So today we will present the Jim and Vicki Chu Community Safety Leader Award, eight awards of merit to about 20 individuals, seven chief's commendations and seven chief citations to about 70 VPD members. As the chief mentioned, we will also be recognizing the civilian of the year and the police officer of the year. So quick note for those of you sharing photos and any, any other content on social media, our hashtag for the event is 
be on the call. So feel free to use it so we can all see your photos. And if you'd like to mention the Vancouver Police Department in your posts, our uh, handle is just at Vancouver PD. At this point, I would like to invite Mayor Kennedy Stewart, the chair of the Vancouver Police Board, to say a few words. Well, good morning, uh, Your Honor, Janet Austin, Chief Constable Adam Palmer, Police Board and Board Foundation members, uh, the VPD Executive and the Accommodation Board, especially honorees, their families, members, and friends. Uh, I'm Kennedy Stewart, the Mayor of Vancouver and the Chair of the Vancouver Police Board, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome everyone here today to this very special ceremony. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Vancouver Police Board, it is the governing body for the Vancouver Police Department, made up of eight citizens, it says eight citizens here, but I would say extraordinary citizens, all residents of Vancouver who dedicate many volunteer hours to providing civilian oversight and strategic leadership to the VPD. The police board provides an important link between the VPD and the community. With me here today are board members Dr. Sherry McGee, uh, Mr. Barge Dahan, uh, Dr. Peter Wong, and Mr. Thomas Tan. Let's uh, have a round of applause for them and their hard work. Thank you. <clears throat> also here today is one of our uh, former police board members, Ms. Carolyn Askew. Ms. Askew has served on the board for four years, and Carolyn has brought legal expertise and a passion for diversity and inclusiveness in policing. Carolyn worked diligently to ensure that the board and the VPD performed at the highest level possible. So I thank Carolyn for her service on the police board, and I invite her to come forward and receive her recognition of service certificate. Please come forward. So my fellow board members and I are very proud to be part of this ceremony. It recognized the, the, recognizes the commitment and heroism of both citizens and police officers of Vancouver. The Civilian Awards of Merit recognize citizens who, in the uh, face of extreme circumstances, exhibited courage, selflessness, and humanity. Their stories are an uplifting reminder of the power of the human spirit and demonstrate that in extraordinary circumstances, people do amazing things. The Jim and, Jim and Vicky Chu Community Safety Leader Award recognizes a citizen who has made an outstanding contribution to crime prevention and community safety in our city. The board is honored to salute these inspiring individuals and extends its warmest congratulations to all the honor, honorees. Now I'll turn the ceremony back over to Ms. Simi Beer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So for all of t today's award winners, I ask that you please come up to the left side of the stage and uh, once you get your award, you can exit off of the right, my right, of course. Um, so the recipient of the 2018 Jim and Vicki Chu Community Safety Leader Award is Ms. Aaliyah Trott. Aaliyah has been the Executive Director of the West End Coal Harbor Community Policing Center since July 2010. She's a strong advocate of community safety and motivates others to make a difference. Over the past eight years, she has grown the number of volunteers at her community policing center from only 45 to 172. Aaliyah and her team of volunteers spearhead various safety initiatives like bike and foot patrols and elder abuse workshops. Not only has Aaliyah recruited a strong base of volunteers, but with help from staff and her volunteers, she raised $172,000 for the 2018 operating budget of the community policing center. She's also an active volunteer. She participates in the West End Community Response Network, the West End Seniors Planning Table, and the Living in Community Steering Group advocating for sex workers. She's also involved with the Tenant Re Resource and Advisory Center and the BC Crime Prevention Association. 
Further, she volunteers as an after-hours crisis response worker for the victim services units at the Vancouver Police Department and Coquitlam RCMP. Aaliyah is a collaborator, a leader, and is highly respected. Those who know her describe her as bright, passionate, and someone who is dedicated to the people she serves. For helping to prevent crime and improve safety in Vancouver, Aaliyah Trott is awarded the Jim and Vicki Chu Community Safety Leader Award. Next, we move on to the Award of Merit. As Mayor Stewart indicated, the award is presented by the Vancouver Police Board to citizens for their, brave, for their bravery and heroic efforts. So that could be attempting to save a life, preventing a crime, or helping the police. Mayor Stewart and Chief Palmer will present these awards. And I'll ask the recipients to please wait until I finish reading the description for your award before coming to the stage. Our first Award of Merit goes to Mr. Zoran, Brankovic and Mr. Nathan Jones. The two of them, strangers at the time, worked together to save a life. Last April, Zoran and Nathan were driving their cars across the Powell Street Railway overpass when they spotted a man standing on the outside of the railing leaning out. The two immediately began to work as a team. Nathan called 911 as Zoran engaged the distraught man in conversation. The pair managed to convince him to come back over the railing and helped him come back over. They positioned themselves between him and the bridge and gently restrained him until police arrived. The man was taken to hospital and later told police that he was just waiting to get the courage to jump. For saving the life of a distraught man in an unpredictable and potentially dangerous situation, Mr. Zoran Brankovic and Mr. Nathan Jones are awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merit. Our second award of merit goes to seven individuals who came together to stop a dangerous man. It all started one morning in September last year when Eleanor Benamino and Nicola, Nicola Mari were returning to their car in a downtown Vancouver parkade. They saw that their sunroof had been smashed and a man was removing items from their car. Craig Vandermeer was driving by as the couple confronted the thief. He pulled over and got out to help. As Craig called 911, the thief bolted. When Craig ran after him, the man turned and released bear spray. The thief jumped into Craig's vehicle and took off. On the, on, the, on the street, the thief struck a pedestrian and caused serious injuries. He then abandoned the vehicle and fled on foot. Father and son, Malik and Musin al-Mamiri, were sitting in their van as the events unfolded. They leapt out and chased the suspect, but were also bear sprayed. Benjamin Smith, who was working in construction in the area, had rushed to the aid of the injured pedestrian. 
Seeing what had happened to the Alma Marys, he took up the chase and tackled the suspect to the ground. A fight ensued, but men, Ben managed to hold on to the suspect until police arrived. For coming together to help each other and demonstrating courage in the pursuit of a dangerous man, Ms. Eleonora Benamino, Mr. Niccolo Mari, Mr. Malik Al Mamiri, Mr. Musin Al Mamiri, Mr. Benjamin Smith, and Mr. Craig Vandermeer are awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merit. Our next award of merit goes to two men for an incident that happened nearly two and a half years ago. On November 10, 2016, a man entered the Canadian Tire Store in Bentall Street and caught the attention of Irfan Alahi, the store's loss prevention manager. The man was dressed in camouflage and immediately went to the hunting and firearms section. Section manager Do Joe Dehesis saw the man approaching and quickly looked up, locked up a rifle he was working on. The man began smashing the glass cabinets to try to obtain a rifle. Joe confronted him and was pepper sprayed, but still persisted in stopping him from getting to a rifle. Joe was then slashed with a heavy knife from the back of his neck, along his throat, and up to his chin. People were screaming and yelling for help. Irfan called 911 and rushed to Joe to render aid. When the suspect removed a rifle from the smashed cabinet, Irfan feared he was about to go on a shooting rampage. He left Joe in another coworker's care and followed the man while providing real-time updates to the 911 operator. As he was leaving the area, the suspect grabbed an elderly man and forced him out of the store. Just then, two police officers arrived and fought to apprehend the assailant. The assailant produced a knife and began stabbing one of the constables. As the officers struggled to break free, Irfan began kicking the suspect repeatedly, who then also tried to stab him. More officers arrived and ultimately were able to stop the attack. Both the staff member and the police officer received very serious life-threatening injuries, but thankfully both survived. For their willingness to stop a dangerous man and for putting themselves in harm's way, Mr. Irfan Alahi and Mr. Do Joe DeJesus De I apologize, are awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merit. Our next award of merit goes to Mr. Jonas Dow. As Crown Counsel, Jonas is dedicated to finding justice for victims of crime. 
Outside of the courtroom, he has proven to be equally committed. On November 6, 2017, as he headed up the stairs of the Main Street SkyTrain station, Jonas noticed a commotion on the street. He witnessed a man grab a bag from the shoulder of an elderly male and flee. Jonas ran down, to, down the stairs to check on the elderly man and then quickly took off after the robber. He chased him across a busy street and eventually tackled him to the ground. Another man stepped in to help hold on to the suspect until police arrived. For his quick action in apprehending the offender, with no thought to his own safety, Mr. Jonas Dow is awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merits. Our next award of merit goes to three men who worked together to help evacuate a building during a fire. Building manager Jeff Taylor and tradesman Christian Evans were working in an apartment building on Thurlow Street one morning in October when they smelled smoke and decided to investigate. They were led to a suite on the fourth floor and saw smoke coming from under the door. They could hear a dog barking, so they opened the door and rescued the dog. They then proceeded to knock on the doors of all the suites on the floor and yell to people to get out. As they, headed, as, they them, as they themselves headed downstairs and out of the building. The pair grabbed a fire extinguisher and were joined by neighbor Derek McNeil, who also wanted to help. The fire had spread and the smoke was now overwhelming, so they couldn't re-enter the building, but they flagged down two police cars nearby. Vancouver Police Constables Peter Colnett, Samit Lale, and Mark Duroux came to help and enter the building with Jeff, Christian, and Derek. There was zero visibility because of the smoke. The six men crawled on their hands and knees and began knocking on more doors. They located and rescued another dog. All six men suffered from smoke inhalation but recovered. Vancouver Fire and Rescue Services extinguished the fire and animal control reunited the pets with their dogs. There were no human or pet, human or animal casualties. For displaying courage and valor in an extremely hazardous situation with a substantial risk of serious death or injury, Mr. Christian Evans, Mr. Derek McNeil, and Mr. Jeff Taylor are awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merit. Jeff and Christian could not attend today, but Christian's mother, June Evans, is here to accept the award on his behalf. The next award goes to three brave women who jumped in to help a police officer who was being assaulted. It was late in, the afternoon, one in, late in the afternoon one day in March last year when a security guard was attacked in Chinatown. A man hit him multiple times from behind, causing him to fall and hit his head. Constable Stephanie Whiteman was driving by when citizens flagged her down. She asked dispatch for an ambulance and began gathering information from bystanders. The citizens identified the man responsible for the assault. When the constable approached him to make an arrest, he sucker punched her and then repeatedly hit and scratched her. The constable was unable to reach her radio to ask for cover, 
but the bystanders called 911. Megan Deacon, Sharman Lyon, and Lee Chun Zhao were not content to stand by and watch as the officer tried to contain the assailant. They jumped into the fray and helped Constable Whiteman get the man to the ground and into handcuffs. For coming to the aid of a police officer without concern for their own safety, Ms. Megan Deacon, Ms. Sharman Lyon, and Ms. Lee Chun Zhao are awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merits. Our next award of merit goes to a father and son. In the early mornings one day last July, Randall Helton and his son Utah were awakened by screams and the ring of their doorbell. When they opened the front door, they found their next door neighbor bleeding from the neck and the arm. The bleeding man told them that his roommate had inexplicably stabbed him while he slept. They took their neighbor in as Randall nervously watched the suspect walk out from between the two homes in an agitated state. 17-year-old Utah, a certified lifeguard, began administering first aid as they waited for first responders. The pair would later learn that the suspect then stabbed a dog a short distance away. After a violent struggle with police officers, it was discovered that the man had also stabbed himself in the chest. The VPD's emergency response medics were able to give first aid to the suspect until he could be taken to hospital. The dog was taken to a nearby vet where, he re where it received life-saving treatment. For opening their door to a neighbor in need and giving life-saving first aid, Mr. Randall Helton and Mr. Utah Helton are awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merit. Our final award of merit goes to two men who stopped a knife-wielding suspect. It was just after noon one day in August when a man armed with a knife entered a downtown coffee shop and began making, began making demands. Manager Jay Wu Lee stepped in to calm the man down, but he only became more agitated. When a customer called 911, the man grabbed their phone and told the dispatcher that he had the whole, sto whole store hostage. Jay Wu began to usher customers to safety while speaking to the man. Matthew Carvalho was sitting outside when he heard the incident unfolding. He ran to the front door and saw staff and customers trapped inside. He opened the door and the suspect rushed towards him with the knife extended. Matthew closed the door to prevent being stabbed and the man then locked the door. Matthew forced the door open and tackled the suspect to the ground. Jay Wu and Matthew worked together to disarm the man and hold him until police arrived. They both sustained injuries in the process. For their courageous and selfless actions in putting the safety of others before their own, Mr. Matthew Carvalho and Mr. Jay Wu Lee are awarded the Vancouver Police Board's highest award for civilian bravery, the Award of Merit. <laughs>
So could you have a final round of applause for all of our Award of Merit winners? So we will now move on to the Chief Constable's commendations and citations. The Chief Constable's commendations are given to members of the Vancouver Police Department for demonstrating skill, judgment, dedication, or integrity during a single investigation, operation, or incident, or demonstrating the highest standards of police conduct or humanitarianism where there was a high risk of exposure to danger, or demonstrating over a period of time exceptional skill, judgment, dedication, or integrity in the performance of duty, or developing a method or program that has a substantial effect on the operation of the VPD. The Chief Constable's citations are based on the same criteria as the commendations. However, the citation is awarded to two or more members working together regardless of unit, squad, team, district, section, or division affiliation. If you are receiving a citation today, you can pick it up from the table at the back of the room at the end of the ceremony after you come up for your recognition. On April 20th, 2018, Constables Alexander Freck and Ian McNulty responded to a call at the mid-span of the Lionsgate Bridge. When they arrived, they found a distraught man sitting on the railing with his feet dangling over the edge. The officers approached him and attempted to speak to the man, but he ignored them and was intent on ending his life. When he suddenly pushed off the railing and began to fall toward the water below, Constables Freck and McNulty reached out over the railing to grab hold of him. They hung on to his shoulder, upper chest, and neck, and were able to hoist him over the railing back to safety. For their strength and determination in preventing a man from ending his life, despite the extreme risk of being pulled off the bridge themselves, Constables Alexander Freck and Constable Ian McNulty are awarded the Chief Constable's commendation. For nearly 10 years, Constable Bill Taylor worked on a memorial project to recognize and honor the VPD's fallen officers. Through his own research, he discovered that their headstones made no mention that they died in the line of duty. Further, Chief Constable Malcolm McClellan, killed in 1917 as he attempted to arrest a barricaded gunman, did not even have a headstone. Constable Taylor applied for funding from the Vancouver Police Foundation for plaques to recognize the officer's ultimate sacrifices and for a headstone for Chief Constable McClellan. He reached out to the family members of the fallen officers. He worked with different cemeteries to have the plaques installed and organized graveside services after each installation. Constable Taylor even traveled to Inkerman, Ontario and Carryville, Saskatchewan to ensure the fallen officers buried there were recognized. For paying tribute to the VPD's fallen officers, honoring them and their families in a poignant and dignified manner, and demonstrating that they sh truly shall never be forgotten, Constable Bill Taylor is awarded the Chief Constable's Commendation. police officer is never truly off duty. This was demonstrated by three VPD constables who were driving home after a long shift 
in the early morning on May 6, 2018. Constables Ryan DeGuanco, Jennifer Talcari, and Ryan Young were driving on Highway 1 when a speeding and erratically driven vehicle passed them. They saw the car strike a barrier, launch airborne, land on its roof, and catch fire. The, the officers pulled over to help. They pried open the car door and removed the unconscious driver, using the flashlight on a phone to guide them. They moved the driver to safety away from the flames and provided first aid until paramedics arrived. The driver was later charged with impaired driving. For rescuing an injured man without hesitation or concern for their own safety, Constables Ryan DeGuanco, Jennifer Talcari, and Ryan Young are awarded the Chief Constable's Commendation. On December 23rd, a cold and rainy evening, witnesses noticed a distraught woman arguing with someone on the north side of the Vancouver Convention Center. She climbed over the railing and jumped about 60 feet into the frigid waters of Coal Harbor. Vancouver Police Constables Byron Capers and Courtney Emers Emerslind arrived on site and they saw the woman struggling to keep her head above water. She was calling for help as she went under the water. The constables rushed to the end of a long concrete breakwater to get close to the victim. They removed their boots and police gear and received flotation devices from other officers who had arrived on scene. The two officers jumped into the ocean, swam out to the unconscious woman, and pulled her back to the breakwater. They performed CPR, but to no avail. Other officers helped move the woman to the Vancouver police boat, where she was treated with an AED. Thankfully, her heart restarted and she was taken to hospital. For an act of bravery in a hazardous situation and for taking substantial personal risk to save a life, Constables Byron Capers and Courtney Emerslind are awarded the Chief Constable's Commendation. About two years ago, Constable Ryan Hooper, as a neighborhood police officer, noticed an increase in residential break-ins where thieves forced or pried open the front doors of homes. He confirmed that 38% of all break-in break -in entries to homes in Vancouver involved this type of entry. He began to research a solution. He looked at building codes and spoke with building inspectors and home builders. Based on his research, Constable Hooper developed a device to fix the problem and tested it rigorously. The fix was a simple and cost-effective piece of hardware meant to be used in conjunction with existing door security hardware. After he developed the device, Constable Hooper helped spread awareness about the problem and the solution. The City of Vancouver has now modified the building code to ensure that the less than $10 piece of hardware is used in all new construction and renovations. For tackling a problem with creativity and developing a product that will increase safety for Vancouver citizens, Constable Ryan Hooper is awarded the Chief Constable's Commendation.
Vancouver police officers take pride in their history and officers who came before them. For Inspector Joanne McCormick, this meant taking on a 10-year project, collecting information on all 5,155 officers who have served in the VP with the VPD in our 132-year history. She found that there was no existing central repository for information such as hiring and retirement dates, birth dates, and places of birth. Her quest found her searching through past HR records, documents, news articles, publications, and photos from the VPD, city archives, the library, and police museum. She created a new historical record that not only has information about all sworn members, but also lists many civilian staffs, staff and officers who served in the World Wars. The amount of personal time she devoted to this project is a testament to her leadership, dependability, and selflessness for creating the single most comprehensive staffing record for the VPD, a historical legacy that we can all be proud of. Inspector Joanne McCormick is awarded the Chief Constable's Commendation. In the early evening of January 29th, 2000, 2017, three Vancouver police constables responded to a report of a distraught man throwing furniture out of his front window. When they got on site, they went in and um, went upstairs to talk to the man. Unbeknownst to them, he was waiting in a dark room to ambush them. Constable Viet Wang was the first through the door. The man immediately leapt toward the constable and plunged the knife into the center of his chest. Thanks to the constable's protective vest, he survived what could have been a fatal blow to his heart. Constable Wang reached, out for, his, reached for his gun, but it was impossible to use it in such close quarters and in the dark. He grabbed the man's knife-wielding arm to try to gain control. Constables Jenny Kwan and Clayton Richardson joined the struggle as the man waved the knife. The officers subdued the man and he was taken to hospital. For their cor courageous response in a dynamic and life-threatening situation, Constables Viet Huang, Jenny Kwan, and Clayton Richardson are awarded the Chief Constable's Commendation. Now we move on to the citations. Criminal investigations can take time, but a group of v VPD investigators did not let that affect their determination to put two dangerous predators in jail and find justice for the victims. The men stood accused of drugging and raping multiple women. None of the victims had any memory of the crimes, and in some cases, the women were not even aware that they had been victims. For five years, the investigators viewed thousands of unsettling videos and photographs and thoroughly examined the smallest of details. They took detailed statements, processed more than 500 exhibits, analyzed records and computer data, and offered expert testimony in court. They did everything in their power to ensure the victims were supported through a long and difficult court case. 
Despite multiple legal challenges and delays, the two men were eventually convicted of 18 out of the 21 charges they faced for handling a lengthy, sensitive, and disturbing case with professionalism, compassion, and commitment, the following officers are awarded the Chief Constable's citation. Staff Sergeant Lisa Byrne, Sergeant Raj Mander, Detective Constables Astrid Bonter, Robert Mitchelson, Andrea Sherry, and Jennifer White, Constables Darren Bain, Jennifer Jarvis, John Piper, Brian Spencer, and Tracy Stables, and crime analyst, Lynn Riddick. Early one morning last July, several calls to 911 reported that a man covered in blood had stabbed a dog. Sergeant Al Kunis was the first to arrive and encountered the shirtless man armed with a knife. He did not know at that time that the man had earlier stabbed his roommate as he slept. That's the story we heard earlier during the award of merit presentations. Sergeant Kunis challenged the man at gunpoint, but his commands were ignored. When Constable Vincent Martin arrived, Sergeant Kunis and the man were locked in a struggle. Constable Martin deployed the beanbag shotgun, but it had no effect. He joined the sergeant in tackling the man to the ground. Constables Cam Lidar and Peter Swan arrived and jumped in to help. As the officers finally gained control, that they, they discovered that the man had a self-inflicted stab wound in the center of his chest. Constable Swan immediately applied pressure to the wound. Emergency response team medics, Constables Andrew Penner and Brian Spencer, took over and rendered life-saving first aid. They later learned that the wound had punctured the man's heart. It would have been fatal if he had not been treated at the scene. The dog was taken to a vet for life-saving treatment. For their courage and determination in stopping an armed and dangerous man and for saving his life, the following officers are awarded the Chief Constable Citation. Sergeant Al Kunis and Constables Cam Litter, Vincent Martin, Andrew Penner, Brian Spencer, and Peter Swan. Last March, after a lengthy custody battle and months of planning, a mother abducted her nine-year-old son. 
Over the next 19 days, a group of police officers worked diligently to find the boy and bring him back home. The mother had researched ways to evade police and taken elaborate steps to avoid capture, which made it a challenging case even for the most experienced investigators. Detectives took calls day and night. They coordinated their efforts with partner agencies, both locally and internationally. They combed through evidence, examining the smallest details, obtained warrants, and worked with the emotionally distraught family of the boy. They engaged the U.S. Department of Homeland Security as the case took the investigators to Phoenix, Arizona. The mother was arrested. She later pled guilty to her charges, and the boy was reunited with his father. For their tenacious commitment to finding a child and reuniting him with his family, the following members of the Project Stewart Command Team are awarded the Chief Constable Citation. Sergeant Christian Lowe and Detective Constables Ross Clark, Eve Koning, Chad Ma, Craig Reynolds, Ada Rodriguez, Rachel Vanderkoff, and Alice Yi. Finding and hiring the Vancouver Police Department's future police officers is a big job, especially when you have among the highest recruitment standards in the country and are also competing with other police departments for the same quality candidates. From January 1, 2016 to September 11, 2017, the recruiting unit was asked to hire 234 police officers and special municipal constables. The unit worked hard and used innovative outreach initiatives to rise to the challenge. The candidates hired were diverse in their ethnicity and gender and reflected the community. They will serve the residents of Vancouver admirably for years to come. For exceptional teamwork, commitment and dedication and answering the department's call for the finest candidates that reflect the community we serve, the staff of the Vancouver Police Department Recruiting Unit are awarded a Chief Constable Citation. Sergeants John Gibbons and Al Gosby, Detective Constables Cal Boyer, Corey Folkstead, Diane Holland, Lisa Kofod, Mark Mann, Christian Oliver, Andrew Pang, Tejinder Parmar, Desiree Sparrow, and Darren Talanko, Constables Junie Bur Julie Birch, Andrea Dunn, Joanne Hardman, Shafe Manji, Michelle Neufeld, and Ryan Perry, and Assistants Ms. Emma Laro, Ms. Erin Murray, and Ms. Na Ms. Nicole Tuff.
One April afternoon last year, officers responded to a call about a distraught man on the Burrard Street Bridge. The man had climbed over the suicide prevention bars and was barely hanging on. Officers, including trained negotiators, began speaking with the man and stopped pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers from using the bridge. After an hour, the man turned around and faced the water and was holding on with only one hand. Officers moved in and grabbed him through the bars and placed a safety strap around his chest. Two specially trained emergency response team members climbed over the barrier. One officer positioned himself directly in front of the man to prevent him from jumping. Vancouver Fire and Rescue Services personnel used the jaws of life to cut through the metal bars and pull the man to safety. He was taken to hospital for treatment for their determination and compassion in preventing a man from taking his life and ultimately ensuring he got the help he needed, the following officers are awarded the Chief Constable Citation. Sergeant Sean Bolivar, Detective Constable Brian DeRose, and Constables Emily Aitken, Darren Bain, Jocelyn Diesel, Christopher Donnelly, John Filippelli, Jason Howell, Kyle Hunt, Colleen McKittrick, and Shane Vanderhyde. The Operational Review Project Team came together in June 2016 to do a comprehensive study of the VPD's operations to determine long-term staffing needs. The team was a mix of civilian and sworn staff with diverse academic and policing backgrounds. Over the next 18 months, they worked closely with independent consultants, exploring best practices and other police agencies in the country, and leading research in criminology. The team conducted thorough, extensive research and analysis. Their final report, a 126-page report, illustrated that service demands and expectations for the VPD continue to steadily rise. Since 2009, the population of Vancouver has increased by 8.3%, and calls for service were up 12.6%. The team outlined the impact on public safety and on employee health and wellness as well as the risk and liability to the department if the status quo remained. The result was approval for 120 sworn and 52 civilian positions to be added to the VPD for over a five-year period. For their outstanding commitment, which resulted in significant and lasting, which will result in a significant and lasting impact on the VPD and the safety of Vancouver citizens, the members of the Operational Review Project Team are awarded the Chief Constable Citation. Staff Sergeant Phil Hurd, Sergeant Tyrone Sideroff, Managers Simon Demirs and Melissa Lee, Planning Advisors 
Tim Skopek Skopeski and Nelson Texera, Senior Budget Analyst Kimberly Jang, Audit Analyst Cynthia Langan, and Planning Analyst Steve Christensen, Corrine Smittis, and Helen Huang. It was 3.30 in the morning, an August day in 2016, when the 911 call came in. A woman, hiding in a bedroom closet, reported a home invasion in progress involving two masked assailants. A second woman had been, had been assaulted and had a knife held to her throat. As the intruders tried to kick down the bedroom door, the caller's line was disconnected. Acting Sergeant Scott Rotherham took control of the police response instructing constables Justin Fraser, Kyle Perlstrom, Kevin Randall, Clayton Richardson, and Bob Sander to covertly lock down the apartment building. As the constables entered the building, they encountered one of the masked suspects leaving the apartment. They challenged him at gunpoint and he surrendered. Officers entered the suite, arrested the second suspect, and rescued both hostages. Numerous weapons were found at the scene. For quick thinking and bravery in a fast-moving and violent situation that resulted in the arrest of two dangerous criminals and the rescue of two victims, the following officers are awarded the Chief Constable's citation. Acting Sergeant Scott Rotherham and Constables Justin Fraser, Kyle Perlstrom, Kevin Randall, Clayton Richardson, and Bob Sander. And now it's time to present two very special awards to recognize two remarkable individuals. The Vancouver Police Department Civilian of the Year and Police Officer of the Year. For the past 32, 32 years, members of the VPD have recognized one of their own as Police Officer of the Year. As the Chief mentioned earlier, three years ago, we extended this recognition to also include Civilian of the Year. I am pleased to announce that Ms. Maria Lise Dami is the VPD's 2019 Civilian of the Year. As the VPD's telecommunications expert, Maria Lise plays an important role in ensuring VPD keeps pace with ever-changing technology. She began her career with the department 26 years ago. She has worked in financial crime, burglary, vice, stolen autos, criminal records, document services, finance, traffic, and victim services. Since 2009, she has been the telecommunications technician 
responsible for the VPD's hardline phone system and the software and technical components that come with it. Maria Lise is heavily involved in the technology aspect of this complex work, and she always remains cheerful and professional and provides excellent customer service. Her knack for troubleshooting means that she identifies issues and provides solutions long before they affect anyone using the system. Last year alone, Maria Lise programmed and distributed more than 400 new phones for faster connectivity, which required significant testing and reprogramming. She tackled this challenging project with her customary enthusiasm and expertise, ensuring there were minimal disruptions to staff. For her commitment and dedication to ensuring VPD staff have the latest in phone technology and for offering expert and exceptional customer service, Ms. Maria Lise Dami is the Vancouver Police Department 2019 Civilian of the Year. And now to our final award of the ceremony. The Vancouver Police Department's Police Officer of the Year for 2019 is Sergeant Mike Hurd. Sergeant Hurd is regarded as a tenacious investigator and an exceptional leader, both within the VPD and in the greater policing community. In his 20 years with the department, he has worked in gang, gang crime, robbery assault and arson, homicide, and court and detention services. He has also been seconded to Federal Serious and Organized Crime and the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit of BC. As an investigator, Sergeant Hurd has taken on some of the most challenging cases the department has seen and has worked alongside local, national, and international investigators. In 2016, he received a provincial, accredi provincial accreditation as a team commander. He's only one of 106 investigators in BC to have this accreditation and only one of 14 in the VPD. Since becoming a sergeant in the homicide unit, Mike's strong leadership and investigative expertise have resulted in a 100% solve rate, double the normal solve rate. In total, he has investigated more than 45 homicides as either a team commander, lead investigator, or file coordinator. Sergeant Hurd's coworkers describe him as intelligent, ethical, compassionate, imaginative, and incredibly dedicated to his work. He routinely shares his experience and knowledge by training and developing other officers from the VPD and across the country. For a remarkable level of commitment and leadership maintained throughout lengthy and complex investigations that have resulted in extraordinary success, Sergeant Mike Hurd is the Vancouver Police Department 2019 Police Officer of the Year. So before we wrap up, I'd like to take a quick moment to say a few thank yous. First off, thank you to the Roundhouse Community Centre for hosting us in this beautiful space again this year. A huge thank you to two incredible colleagues who work on this event for months to make sure all of the little details are looked after, and that's our event managers, Ms. Monique Thomas and Ms. Laura Tempesta. 
A big thanks to our amazing videographers and photographers who capture all of today's special moments. And a thank you to my team, the Public Affairs team, for all the work you've done leading up to this event and for the work you did today. And um, finally, a thank you to all of you for coming and a big congratulations to all of today's award recipients. If you or your family members would like to take home extra copies of the booklet, you can find them on the table in the back. And also, we invite everyone to meet and mingle with the award recipients and partake in some light refreshments to my right. And lastly, please rise for the departure of the Lieutenant Governor. <laughs>